Thank y'all for coming to the Home Depot booth here. We got a lot of people here that make a living through the world of barbecue and grilling and Home Depot is a, such a great platform for, for us to be able to like try and sell our wares and satisfy your habits. For those who don't know, Memphis and May is all about the pork. You either cook pork ribs, whole pork shoulder, or whole hog, and you pick one and that's it. The, the rib of choice for Memphis and May, generally speaking, is the loin back rib. It's, a, it's a, also known as the baby back rib, and that's the rib that's closest to the spine. In Kansas City Barbecue Society style cooking, usually the rib of choice will be a St. Louis cut rib. I'm gonna be doing a loin back rib and a St. Louis cut rib, and I'm gonna go through my process. When I go to wrap the ribs, I'm gonna wrap with the seven exact ingredients that I used to make finals with at Memphis MA that time when it was just my dad and I. It's the exact seven ingredients that I use in competition barbecue. There's a couple of things that have happened in the pork industry that's been really beneficial. One was that when the USDA lowered their recommended cooking temperature, that really benefited pork a lot. My mom, if she was still around, she would never eat a pork chop that wasn't really well cooked to probably being well done. But for me, my preference when I'm cooking pork loin, uh, pork chops, is to have a loin cut that's probably more like on the medium rare going into maybe slightly medium. I think it's a lot juicier. What I'm looking for when I'm buying my pork is I'm looking for a lot of intermuscular fat. I'm looking for marbled meat. I'm looking for striations of fat. That was another thing that happened that was really good in the pork industry when we went away from that lean generation. We had a period of time where we were trying to breed the hogs to be leaner and leaner and leaner and then we all of a sudden were breeding them to where there was no flavor anymore. So I'm looking for well marbled me. I'm looking for a nice red color in my pork. The fuel that I'm using is available at Home Depot and it's the Fogo Premium Hardwood Lump Charcoal. What I like about this wood is it's Inglewood. It comes from El Salvador and they plant these trees to provide shade for the coffee plants and then they prune these trees. So I, I like that. Uh, the size of the lumps is really nice. There's very little small pieces or dust. If you've never cooked with lump charcoal before, it gets hotter than briquette. We've got the Kamado Summit here. Lump charcoal is, is the preferred charcoal on most of your Kamado style cookers, your ceramic cookers. One of the things that's really nice about it is we can have that fire going and we can really choke down that exhaust and have the airflow be low and still run a clean fire. But if we give it oxygen, it's, it, it, it can get hot. So it's great for searing and, and cooking steaks and hamburgers on too. The method that I'm gonna do with these ribs, and I wrote a, a recipe years ago for Savor Magazine, and it was the 3-2-1 method, and I did that back in 2008. And the idea with that recipe is that we smoke the ribs for three hours unwrap. We wrap them for two hours and, and cook them. Then sauce them and let the sauce set for an hour and you're cooking at a super low temperature, trying to keep it at 200 degrees. I'm not, I don't subscribe to that anymore. I'm not a fan of that anymore. My method, honestly speaking, is more of a, like a, a two, two method or, or a two and one and a half method. I can't do it for this demo because we don't have enough time. But what I like to do is I like to trim my rib, pull the membrane off before I go to bed. Then when I get up in the morning, they're in the refrigerator, the ice chest, I'll pull those ribs out an hour before I want to cook them. I'll season them on both sides. I'll show you all my thoughts on, on seasoning ribs, but I like to let that rub sit on there for one hour. Then I put it on my smoker at a cooking temperature of about 275 to 300 degrees. If, on my offset, it doesn't matter. On my, on my kettles or, or my Kamado style grills, I'm going to set it up two zone where I have hot coals on one side, no coals on the other. That's a really gentle way of cooking a rack of ribs. Most barbecue rubs, including the one I'm gonna to use today, have sugar in them. And if they get too hot, that sugar's gonna burn and it's gonna make for a bitter eating rib. So if we set it up, like I said, where we got coals on one side and no coals on the, hello ma'am, and no coals on the other, we can put it on the cool side. It's gonna get plenty of heat, it's gonna get plenty of smoke, it's gonna get nice color, but we don't have to worry about burning those ribs up. What I'm getting ready to do right now is remove the membrane. I find that it's an easier process to do while the rib is still cold. That membrane is sometimes hard to pull off when the ribs get really warm. So Dustin pulled these ribs out for me about 15 minutes ago and it's hot out here. So it could be uh, a little bit challenging as these ribs warm up. Some people don't subscribe to removing the membrane but I kind of disagree with that. I think the membrane, as it cooks, has a paper-like quality to it. 
So we're just gonna remove the membrane off of, uh, but this is a nice rack of ribs here. This one, the membrane is already gone. Some other things that I'm looking for when I am cooking ribs is I want, especially competition, is I want a really thick, meaty rib. And, cause that's gonna be, the judge is gonna really, really like that. But this rack of rib is, is really thick. It's got good striations of fat. On, on the loin back rib, there's gonna be some of that loin meat there for the competition cooks uh, this weekend. That's a little bit of a challenge because that loin meat will dry out. And so it's, it's, it's trying to like get the rib cooked and try and preserve as much of that loin meat as you can. Often we'll trim that off just to kind of get as much of it to go away as we can. And then I got the St. Louis cut spare here. This has got a membrane on it. Some people will come in with spoon. But I usually just use a paper towel and I'm just gonna tear it off. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna cut that bone off I am gonna line this cut edge here and I'm gonna score it. I'm trying to make a perfect triangle. And I'm just gonna make this cut. Now there's some fat that won't render out in the cook for me. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a spoon, I'll scrape that fat out. And I'm just gonna come in, I'm gonna shorten this up on this end. The honey hole for the ribs is gonna be right in here. This side's looking pretty good. If I had layers of fat right now, I'd, I'd trim that off. But I like to take and roll this rack of rib up like this, and I can put two in a gallon resealable bag. And then I will put those in there, and I usually double bag them, and then I ice them. The reason I double bag them is if that ice melts at all and you get any water in the cooler, I don't want this rib to soak in a rack of ribs. So if we were doing a, you know, a family reunion or a picnic or, or a competition or whatever, we could do this in advance. There's a French culinary term, and it's called mise en place. And basically, it's the idea is just to be organized. I don't care if we're a carpenter, electrician, a plumber, or a chef, having your workshop set up, having your, all your tools that you need. Like I've got seven ingredients right here that I'm gonna use when we wrap, and I've got them in the order that I use them. Whenever you season, you always wanna shake your rub, especially if it's been sitting in your cupboard for a few weeks or a couple of months. Rubs can last a really long time in a cool, dark place. I like to keep them in an airtight container. But the reason I want to shake these rubs up is your heavier ingredients over time will settle down. The first question you got to ask yourself, is it going to have sugar in it or not? Most barbecue rubs do have sugar in it. If it's going to have sugar, is it going to be more salty than, than sweet or more sw sweet than salty? That's the first thing that I work on when I'm developing my own rub. Then I'm going to come in with spice. Is it going to be real spicy? Is it going to be black pepper? Is it going to be cayenne pepper? Is it going to be chipotle? But what's the heat source going to be? I lean on granulated garlic and granulated onion more so than powdered. The reason is I like the way it sprinkles better. I'm going to put the bone side down when I cook it. So I'm going to season the bone side first, then I'm going to do the uh, meat side. I'm going to intentionally over spray a little bit and you'll see how I use that to tap the edges with the rub. I am going to press that down. How much rub and for how long? The bigger the cut, the more rub. The bigger the cut, the longer that we let that rub sit on there. Why? Rubs have salt in them. Uh, we want that flavor to get into the meat. Uh, with my ribs, I do an hour. With my pork butts, I do seven hours. If we put that rub on there too long, that, that, that rub can actually cure these ribs and we can get like a hammy-like quality taste with letting that rub sit on there too long and we, and we can actually pull out some moisture. I'm gonna be really careful to do a nice even coat. This is my sweet rub. So I'm just pressing that down. Then I'm gonna flip it up like this. And I'm gonna do the other side. And I'm intentionally getting some rub on the cutting board. If I were doing 100 racks of ribs, I would probably be a little quicker than this, right? But for your family, for small groups, if you're doing less than 20 racks of ribs, I think this is good. I was driving all over to do uh, all over the country doing competition barbecue and I was probably missing my son's baseball game and competition barbecue is expensive and I was driving one day and I thought to myself are my rubs the freshest that they can be and I thought you know what they're not I bet I got cayenne peppers been in my, my cupboard for eight years I bet I got cinnamon has been in there since 1988 I went home and I took all my seasonings out of my cupboard and I got all new fresh spices if we're gonna take time to babysit a rack of ribs for four hours our rubs should be fresh I'm just gonna tap that edge on that overspray. I'm gonna do the same thing here. My rub, that pork, from experience, I know in an hour that rub's gonna start to dissolve. 
That flavor's gonna get in those ribs, but it is not gonna cure the meat. The question was wrapped or unwrapped. So generally speaking, it's usually, I got them on usually sheet pans and they're unwrapped. And they said ambient temperature, room temperature for one hour. When we look about food safety, we don't usually generally have to worry about making somebody sick until meat's been above 40 degrees and, and, and below 140 degrees for four hours. So at one hour, we were plenty. Now, if we are in a dusty field, I'd probably wrap it. But in my kitchen or in my trailer, uh, it would be not wrapped. This is something that if we were gonna go to our neighbors for a cookout and we were like 15 minutes away, we could season this at our house and then go over there and have the grill lit and then and do it at home. There's nothing worse than having people over for, for a picnic or, or food and you're washing dishes and cooking the whole time and you don't get to see any of your friends. So anything that I can do in advance that makes me have a little more time with my, my family and my friends, I wanna do it. So anyways, we would do that, do the same process with the loin back. Actually, this loin back's meatier than the St. Louis cut, but I'm just gonna season it again. And again, I'm putting, I'm seasoning the side that's gonna go down first. So after it's set for an hour, or while it's setting, I wanna get my grill going. So I'm gonna use a chimney to get my, my lump charcoal going. John Willingham, who was from Memphis, who was a legend in barbecue, he wrote a book. And John Willingham in his book said, smoke is dirt. We're cooking, we're not smoking. And that really stuck with me. I did a television show for years and the, the creator of that show gave me the nickname, The Professor. And John said, Tuffy, you can talk for hours on smoking wood and fire. And I like the way, actually Fogo says it's the first ingredient. I coined this phrase, the stereotypical expected flavors of barbecue. Uh, I want the meat to be the star. In this case, I want the, the pork to stand out. And then I want my rub and the smoke from my grill and my sauce and all my ingredients to be complimentary backdrop flavors. But I want, I want that pork to shine. So then the next step would be, we let it sit for an hour, and now we're gonna do TV cooking. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these foils to protect from all the stuff I just did. Then I'm gonna take the other two pieces of foil, and I've got two racks of ribs that were seasoned that have been cooking on this smoker for two hours. So they got smoke on them. So when the ribs go on, and they've been cooking for an hour, so they were, they were rubbed for an hour, room temperature, Got my grill going to 275, 300 degrees. I got it set off uh, two zone. I put them on. I, I put those ribs on the smoker, on the cool side. Another little comp trick is take your ribs and compress them, squinch them up, make them a perfect rectangle. Because if they're all stretched out when they cook, they'll they'll they'll, they'll, they'll be bow shaped. So just if we squish them up, they'll they'll grip to that rack and we'll have a nicer straighter rack. After they've been cooking one hour, 275, 300 degrees, come in with either a little butter, or I can't even believe I'm saying this out loud because it's my cooking background, or parquet, or I can't believe it's not butter, and just do drizzles, like four or five lines on the ribs. It'll just melt off, and because it's not over the coals, we're not gonna catch a fire, and it's gonna be like chapstick on ch chap lips, but it's just gonna moisturize these ribs. What it does to the ribs is just unbelievable. It's Everybody's doing it in competition world, and I'm sure y'all seen it on TV too. But if you have never done it, you should do it. It elevates the texture of that rib so much. So hour on the smoker, hit them with some butter. 30 minutes later, I come in with my apple juice. I spritz, I don't stream. I want it to spritz out. And then I, I moisturize them. So we're gonna go over here and I'll start. Uh, you know what I need to do? All right, I'm gonna start with the St. Louis cut. But what I'm going to do, if y'all have never used these, I'm going to use these cotton gloves. You can get them at like Home Depot or HomeDepot.com. And what they do is they insulate your, your hands from the heat. What I like about it, so I'm going to come in with another set of gloves now. Anyways, I'm going to show you a little trick that I do now. And I wouldn't do it. I don't think I'd do it at home, but maybe I would. I'd do it at competition for sure. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take it. I'm going to squeeze with my hands and I'm going to where that, those bones are in the meat, I'm gonna compress the meat and I'm gonna make it release a little bit. And all that's gonna do is make for a nicer presentation once it cooks, but I have lost big checks to a small amount of points before. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do just the opposite. I wanna, see, I wanna season the meat side first because I'm gonna flip it and then I'm gonna do the, uh, the bone side last, because now when it goes back on the cooker, it's gonna cook with the, the meat side down in the full. Now this thing right here, golly, I'm showing y'all so many of my tricks. 
This thing is actually made for making tea. I used to use a confectionery sugar shaker or a cocoa shaker. You gotta find one that is fine mesh enough. I don't care how good a cook you are. If you take cayenne pepper and you do it like that, it's gonna clump down. You might not like it spicy and I don't wanna fire anybody up, but I want a little backdrop of the heat. So, and this is hard to do in the, in the, uh, in the wind. And so normally I would have someone with me and they might have like a cutting board or something making a little wall for me. But I'm just gonna come in and I'm just gonna do a little flutter. You can barely see it. And I'm just putting a little cayenne pepper on there. Then I'm coming in with my rub and I'm reinforcing that. This is something that's kind of weird to do the first time too. And it's actually easier to do once I flip it. A little bit of my sweet rub. These are dehydrated minced onion bits and I'm just gonna, a light sprinkle of these. Then I'm gonna come in with butter. You can see how it's already making it look pretty. Then light brown sugar. This is such an interesting place where we can add so much different flavors. So we could go in Asian direction. We could go in Italian direction. You, you, whatever you want to put in here, but I'm giving you the seven that I use in competition barbecue. Now this is honey. This is not my lucky honey. That's another story for another day. But I'm just gonna put a drizzle of honey. If we scorched our ribs and got them a little crispier somewhere than we wanted, this is an opportunity to give a little bit of uh, attention and fix it. So we can butter it a little bit more or we can spritz it a little bit more. So then I'm gonna do that. Then I'm gonna flip and I'm gonna press this again. And this is doing pretty good. And I'm gonna repeat cayenne, rub, minced onions, butter, light brown sugar. If you're cooking down in Florida or you're cooking up in the Northeast, they like it a little sweeter. So yeah, I might go a little bit heavier on the brown sugar right now. They also like maple syrup up in uh, the Northeast. So that, spray. I lean on sprays all the time. All right, this is something that I, I see people squish it all up and that never made any sense to me. When I wrap, I do it like this every time. I don't care if it's brisket or pork butt or ribs. And I'm gonna be careful to not puncture. So I did that way first. Then on this end, I'm gonna fold it in. I'm trying to be careful to not puncture that aluminum foil with the bone, because then all that stuff leaks out and goes all on our grill. And then I do the same here. Let's talk about when ribs are done, how we tell, and time and temperature. If you ever go into a big festival and there's a lot of rivers there, and they're cooking hundreds and hundreds of racks of ribs, generally speaking, they're doing the bend test. And they're gonna take their skewers and they're gonna lift it up, uh, put it right in the middle of these ribs, and they're gonna lift it up. And if that rib, as it gets weight on it, if that meat's starting to tear, it's probably done. If you take a thermometer and you stick it in there and that meat's gripping that thermometer at all, it's not done. If it slides in like butter, it's done. People talk about a rib, a good rib being a rib that's fallen off the bone. The real truth is, uh, in my world, a rib that's fallen off the bone is overcooked. But that speaks to nobody likes tough barbecue. Overs beat unders. Overcooked barbecue is gonna do better than undercooked barbecue. You know, for me, a, a, a temperature reading on these cuts of meat to lets me know when I'm in the ballpark of them being done, but ultimately it's a feel thing. And I think we just need to remember that. You can also add apple juice with a little cider vinegar. You'll see in a lot of Texas joints where they like to spritz with uh, cider vinegar. If you were doing a Car Carolina style barbecue, you might want to spritz with vinegar. And then these are going Back on the grill, loin backs generally could be done as quick as an hour. And my uh, St. Louis cuts are usually gonna be an hour and a half, maybe two hours. So I'm gonna clean my station up and we're gonna now bring up ribs that have been, they were wrapped, they were cooked to tender. We're gonna sauce them. I'm gonna talk about my thoughts on, on saucing ribs. And then I'm gonna slice them up and I'm gonna get two volunteers because the two volunteers are gonna be guaranteed to get a rack of ribs and you're gonna be passing them out to everybody else. Has anybody ever had chicken where the sauce was burned and then the chicken was raw when you took a bite in the center? Yeah, that's terrible. My dad, I love him to death, but he did that to me a couple times when I was a kid. Um, I think it goes back to that whole thing. Sometimes cooking outdoors can be a little challenging and it can be a little stressful. We're not gonna, you gotta cook your chicken, your ribs, whatever meat it is, till it's the tenderness that you want, and then we sauce at the end. 
Most barbecue sauces have sugar in them. If they get too hot, they're gonna burn. That's why two zone cooking is really friendly for that kind of stuff because we can, we can sauce our ribs or chicken or whatever we're cooking and then put it on the cool side of that fire and not have to worry about burning that sauce. If we do cook direct and we gotta put that, that chicken or that rib back directly over the coals with the sauce, stay right there. Don't go check the football score. Stay right there and let's just flip it. Um, this, this, this Fogo lump is gonna be running hot and you know we just we we don't want to ruin three four hours of work by walking away and burning up our sauce are right, these ribs here we're going to slice them up two volunteers to run ribs for me and that's going to guarantee that you get a rib so i'm just the first two up here you get the job all right got one and two all right so we're going to do this the same way that i did last time you, you two get to pick, if I were y'all, I'd pick from this end down here with the way they're cutting. But y'all, all right, ladies first, which, rack, uh, which rib do you want for yours? This one? That was a good choice. All right. So I'm putting yours over here. And don't you try and take her rib la uh, later. That one. that one. All right. That's a good choice too. All right. So those, those are y'all's. Now we're going to start giving you ribs and you just take them to whoever. Y'all getting your steps in today, aren't you? Very much so, but that's all right. Oh, look at We got ribs all the way to the back. All right, does anybody want a cold beer? No, just kidding. Yes, <laughs> yes, please. Anyways, thank y'all so much for coming. Uh, enjoy Memphis and May. And my booth over there, S19, if you want to come by. And appreciate y'all so much. Thanks.